Yang, many residents on the island are still in temporary shelters following a string of powerful earthquakes and aftershocks. At least 800 homes have been badly damaged or destroyed. More than 1,000 quakes have hit Puerto Rico already this year. The latest aftershock on Wednesday had a magnitude of 5.2. And earlier this month, the island was jolted by an earthquake with a magnitude of 6.4, the strongest Puerto Rico has seen in more than a century. One person was killed. So what is behind so many earthquakes and aftershocks hitting the island in a relatively short period? For some answers, let's go to Ross Stein in California. He's the adjunct professor of geophysics at Stanford University and the CEO and co-founder of a Tembler. Professor, let me get to it. Why are we seeing so many earthquakes in Puerto Rico since the start of the new year? Well, a typical earthquake sequence starts with the main shock, a large earthquake, and then aftershocks have the behavior that they slowly decay in time. But this is not a usual sequence. It's more of what we call a swarm. We've seen a lot of earthquakes building up to so far the largest shock, and we're still seeing a fair amount of large shocks following. This means that it may not be over. We should just be vigilant the fault on which this earthquake occurred, which was only discovered a few years ago, is much longer than the rupture that occurred. So it could be followed by something larger. We're seeing a lot of damage. We have that video that we're showing right now. Homes, buildings, damaged or destroyed. Is weak infrastructure, Professor, part of the problem here? Why we're seeing this kind of damage? Well, uh, the gods have been unfair to Puerto Rico because it sustained a horrendous hurricane just a few years ago, which showed that its infrastructure was inadequate for its natural environment. And now earthquakes are showing it to us again. Puerto Rico lies in a tectonic vice with two giant faults to the north and to the south, and it's laced by smaller faults, one of which ruptured. So we have to accept that further earthquakes are in Puerto Rico's future, and we need to build structures that can sustain both earthquakes and hurricanes for this beautiful island to flourish. Are you concerned that with all these earthquakes um, and aftershocks, something bigger is about to hit the island, an even stronger earthquake? Well, unfortunately, we cannot predict earthquakes, and earthquakes have a lot of rather erratic behavior. What we can say is when we look at sequences like this, where there wasn't starting off with a large main shock and then going to aftershocks of decreasing uh, frequency, this is somewhat unusual and the likelihood of a, lar of a yet larger earthquake is higher than their normal sequences. So precaution is called for. We really cannot say we're in the all clear zone. And talk about your app. Well, Tambler is a free seismic risk app that works everywhere in the world. Uh, you can reach us, uh, you can get it on the Google Play or the App Store, or you can go to our website, tambler.net. It opens to your location. It tells you what your risk is, so you can assess what's likely in your lifetime and how to prepare for it. Because we want to let everybody understand if they have a seismic risk, that they can take measures to make themselves safer. And Professor, finally, where are we in terms of science? You said it's hard to predict earthquakes. Well, they've managed to predict tsunamis. Can we get to a point where we can do that with earthquakes? Well, what we can do and what is being developed in the United States right now is what's called earthquake early warning. Once the earthquake begins, it sends the seismic waves out at something like three kilometers or two miles a second, we can beat the seismic waves to your location with the warning, in which case people get several seconds of warning. Now that's not a prediction, it's just helping people become aware that an earthquake shaking is about to hit. This is what we can do. Uh, earthquake warning is in place in Mexico City and Istanbul and in Japan, and it's constantly getting better and faster. But when it comes to really understanding where our next earthquake is going to be, what we can do is say where the hazard is high over the next 10 years, over the next 30 years, 
And so people can prioritize their protections. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Professor Ross Stein, thank you so much. And